What up players, it's Wallboss Tay up in this mode. Today we're going to take a look at part two of the Sisters of Avalorn test model, or, or um, painting guide. I've got the girl on the left all uh, done and ready to go. That's kind of what you've seen last night. And the one on the right is fully completed and finished kaput, so I'm kind of using it as a reference item. So, I hope you guys enjoyed it. The colors that we use are White Scar, Avedon Black, Morn Fang Brown. Oh, not do. I'll try to sneak in there. <laughs> Doombo Brown. Auric Armor Gold. Uh, Bugman's Gold. Russ Gray. And for the bow, we use Cantor Blue. Calidor Sky. White Scar from the game set, as well as. Mr. Wait, what? Russ Gray. And I think that was it. Yeah, so that's all we're doing. Um, metallics wise, though, we're using Iron Belt or Lead Belcher and Rune Fang Steel just to give you a little bit of a heads up. So thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you liked the video. Leave me any questions or comments that you have. Um, Project High Elves is going much better than I was afraid it would. I think it's going really, really well. And uh, I'm on my way <sighs> to have these girls done by the time of the competition. So thanks for watching. Really appreciate all your support. And we'll see you in the next video. Later, play us. Hey, guys. Welcome back. We're continuing on with our sister of Lothurn here. And, oh, man, since yesterday, this sword tip broke. I don't know what happened. I was just reaching over to grab something, and my hand kind of brushed this sword tip and it snapped off so I had to go back with some plastic glue and glue that sucker back on so now I'm just gonna kind of uh, redo it so I'm going back on with I'm, we're starting with iron breaker but you could really if you want just go on to uh, rune fang steel which is the, the next color we're gonna use That's only because I broke my sword. I broke my sword, oh boy. So, Runefang Steel is the color. <sighs> Today we're gonna go over some awesome techniques for doing the, the, the skin, the hair, and everything else. One thing that I noticed that I think really sucks, but I think it might only be me, is that my, my girly man blue color, my Gilliman blue is, like it dries really, weird and cloudy so uh i don't i don't know if it's supposed to be like that or if it's because my pot is old and i didn't shake it enough but it just looks kind of kind of kind of sketchy it's pants as my friends across the pond would say also i just noticed while i was gluing on this girl's sword that her chain or her scale mail down here Got a little clogged up with primer, unfortunately, but that's okay. That's just a danger you have to be aware of. When priming your models, you don't want to, uh, you don't want to get too much primer on it because then it'll seep into the these areas and then just kind of dry there, and then you can't remove it unless you really go in with the, you know, with some some green. What's it called? Green... Green... Not green stuff. Green... Liquid green. And kind of start from the beginning. Now with the Runefang Steel, the High Elf... These girls have this uh, little band under their corsets on their torsos that are silver. So we're just painting over that. For the um, silver on like the sword, if you're doing the sword or any kind of high elf blade, you want the rune fang steel to be the most prominent highlight because it's really nice and bright, catches the light and reflects really nicely. So I'm gonna go on one side, and then on the other side down here, on the top of the gauntlet. Over 
here on the front side. I think it's just my pot. I think I I got a bad pot of girly man blue. I once had a bad pot of girly man blue back in the 70s. Hello, Lewis. I didn't come down for days. It was the worst trip I ever had. I don't even know what that means. Don't pretend you don't know, Warbosh. I know you're always hitting that part of girly man blue. Right, the Rune Fang steel is nice and nice and uh, reflective. It's really bright and shiny, so that'll definitely look good on everything. Next, what we're gonna do is we are going to take some um, 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 Gehenna's gold. Let's see if I can find it, Gehenna's. Oh, I thought I just had some. Igor, yes, Moshka. Fetch me my Gehenna's gold, please. All right. Also, I was only able to find a brass scorpion. No, that's not gonna do. I wonder if I knocked it over. There was this other time when I had a bad pot or something else. Hmm. Not now, Louis. I think we're gonna have to stop the video for a second. Until I find... Here it is! Gehenna's gold. This is what we're using. Now, if you don't have it, or if for some reason you couldn't find it, like I couldn't, then perfectly suitable alternative would be shining gold from the old range. But um, you'll find that when you put this on top of the Balthazar gold that we painted in the earlier step, it goes from a reddish kind of bronze, no, brass. It goes from a kind of brass red to this nice, bright, yellowish gold. Trying to hit anything that has gold on it. And the great thing about these uh, these models is that they are so well sculpted that it's it's really easy to find find the lines where you're supposed to go. Just remember to always don't use too much paint on your brush. Uh, a, uh, a mistake that a lot of beginner painters make is they put too much paint on their brush so there's when they when they apply it to their model it just kind of spills and pools everywhere and just looks really really bad and sloppy so if you've seen my part one kind of showed you how I go about getting paint just on like the very tip on the sides not even like the tip but like the sides of the brush and the bristles. That's really the best way to go about it. And just kind of lightly brush on the paint over and over again in a lot of small little applications like that. It's a lot better to do that than one quick all the way around. Leaves you with a better finish. Feel like you were much more talented for doing it that way and everybody including your little sister of Avalorn ends up happy
Okay, now we are going to start building up on the white cloth. We're going to start with Fenrisian Grey. So let me show you what you're going to start doing first. We're going to take the Fenrisian Grey and we're going to slowly spread it on the lightest areas of the cloak, the sleeves, and any other parts but I'm still going to leave some of that rust gray in this fold here and in the folds elsewhere in the cloak. What that does is it creates the illusion of a false shadow, shadow that isn't really there but when you're looking at the model just happen to pick it up. It's a, it's a cool little visual optical illusion. So you can always start by painting it on the by painting on the um, the lighter area, and then what I call feathering or teasing the paint onto the the middle areas towards the darker shades. But the thing to keep in mind is that we're building up to white. So we want as much of that base color in there as possible. So now I'm painting this little fold here. Usually what you would do, what I did with my last Sister of Averlorn was I did two coats of Fenrisian Grey. You'll find that when you do more than one coat, it really is a good way of building up the layers. The layers. And it uh, makes the model end up looking a lot better than if you just do one fast layer slapped on. Sorry about the length of the last video, it's like on like 40, 40 something minutes for the first video of the Sister of Averlorn. Just kind of lost track of time. Okay, now you really want to get the, the, this little cloth in the midriff as well. I thought it was armor actually, but it's cloth. It's between the the silver rims of the corset piece, the torso piece, as well as the little, for lack of a better word, the girdle. Here we've got a little bit more to do. We're going to start with Auric Armor Gold. I'm going to shake this up a lot because this is going to be the highest level of gold that you're going to do. So it is pretty bright as well. I think with this, the reason why you want to start with Gehenna's gold before you build up to this is because it is so bright of a yellow that it's um, it's too yellow. I think it's a little too thin all by itself if you just paint it straight onto the model it's a little too thin so what I'm saying is that it would go over the Balthazar gold the red of the Balthazar gold and it won't really cover or do anything you need that yellow of the Gehenna's gold underneath it first I think to really get a good base for it High Elves, Wood Elves, Eldar, they all use this color. I 
complements their gold really nicely. At this point you may be making mistakes and getting the paint other places it's not supposed to be. If that happens, that's fine, don't worry about it. We are going to fix all of that. <clears throat> Okay, so now we're gonna start doing the bow before we get to the uh, get to the skin and the other fun stuff. Actually, before we do the bow, let's do a little bit of the white. So after you do your second coat of Fenrisian gray, you're gonna add in a little bit of white scar. And you're going to paint it onto the brightest areas. Now white scar has a tendency to pool, which means that when you paint it right onto the model, it'll it'll clump if you're not careful. So you want to constantly be moving the brush so it doesn't have a chance to show the brush strokes and to streak. Kind of like that. Another thing you can also do is thin it on your wet palette. You get a wet palette so that it's a little bit more watery, not as streaky. Or use a flow aid or a paint retarder. Any of those techniques work. The, the finished goal that we're going for is where the paint goes on nice and smooth and it covers evenly. So let's try taking a look from this fold here. White Scar is a very finicky color. See, look how you can see like the paint line between the first and the second fold there. It's just gonna need to be kinda addressed and covered up with future layers. You're gonna have to keep layering your paint and just kind of hoping that it doesn't dry and leave a leave a streak mark on your model. Ugh, that's so ugly. So we're filling in all the gaps here. Got some on his green cloak, don't worry about it. Just keep calm and paint on.
even if you get it like on the back of their boots that's you know what that's okay Cool. Except for that one little, one little splotch. Looks pretty cool. So we're gonna add one more little swatch of right uh, of white right onto the cloak. Well, you've got the skull white out. What I did last night that you can't really see here is that I, I painted the commander's teeth. All right, so now let's take a look at fixing up our model. We've got some green here on the back. So we're just going back to our base color, which is wah, flesh. It's nice and green. Uh, it's not as dark as Caliban green, but it's not as light as Castellan green, which I believe is the kind of color trio for this kind of green. Okay. Doing pretty good. Now what we're gonna do, we base coated the, the bow in um, Temple Guard, Temple Guard Blue. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take Calidor Blue, or Calidor Sky, we're gonna add some water and we're going to add some shading. So I've, this is another thing I've never done. I've never shaded, uh, started at a high color tone and shaded down. I think it's a very cool thing to do. So you're just going wherever you feel the shading should be. Also, you're gonna have to eventually do some highlighting so you don't wanna shade over too much because you're gonna need to work on getting the illusion back. Here we go, let that dry for just a second, not even that long before we go into the next one, which is Cantor Blue. Cantor Blue, just like Calidor Sky, is going to be painted directly into the resources of Calidor Sky. The great thing about this game, or this, uh, sorry, this model, or this part of the model, is that all the flames look very individually realistic. They look like they could, with big quotation marks, exist, be catching this bow on fire and whatnot. There you go. 
go. The last step for this shading down is we're gonna take some watered down Abaddon Black. You either do it in your wet palette or if you have a clean water source, just kind of get some paint off the inside lid, track off some of that water. Now what we're doing is we're being very sparing with our... You don't want to show too much, so I would say kind of stick to like every every other or every third um, little little bit where the flames kind of die down. So now we're going to highlight up and we're going to do that with a mix of White Scar and Fenrisian Grey. Fenrisian Grey and White Scar, you're going to go two to one. One Fenrisian Grey and two White Scars. Mix it on the palm of my hand and beautiful. So it's a highlight color, which means that you're going to want to start taking things out of focus just a little bit so we don't see all the, all the screws and hammers, unless that's what you want. Oh my gosh, what did I just say? I think I was dozing off through that whole conversation I just had with myself. I was trying to remember what I said to tack on something funny to it, and I... For the life of me, I can't remember. All I remember is painting this elf from the day I was born until the day I die. That's what it feels like when you slog through something. I know I've been there. Hope is coming, my friends. And there you have it, that's how you paint one of the spooky ghost bows. What we're going to do next is we're going to highlight up the armor, or the leather parts, with Mornfang Brown. The reason why we didn't start off with this is because over a, black, uh, a white undercoat, the, the boots just shine better, nicer. They are nice with riding boots though. What? Oh my gosh, what am I talking about? I'm just painting. I'm just painting. The scope between this girl's legs is like... I can see up your pantyhose. Then Lewis says... Did somebody see pantyhose? Oh, it was just this abandoned skull by the side of the road. I need a dog. I'm gonna go upstairs and do my mission. I didn't know you was a DJ, Louis. Paint my dubstep. I didn't know you write dubstep music, Lewis. Ah, in my dreams, it's so easy. Just get two cats fighting over an accordion. Oh, 
Oh my gosh, I am totally off the rails today. What am I talking about? Let's wrap it up here. There's no way I'm going to be able to get through another 5-10 minute slog of this. So thanks for watching everybody. Let me know if you have any questions on what we've done so far. Like you've seen, we've brightened up the gold. We have uh, done the magic bow paint. Uh, we did the whites of the armor and we went over all the silvers. I think I said matching the, the yellow armor, yeah? But slowly but surely our little maiden here is getting better and better. So we're gonna sign off right now. Again, we're gonna have the two ladies kind of with each other and we'll see you in the next video. Ladies players!